Hello and welcome back. I'm at Pound Shipping on the outskirts of Portsmouth. Now, if you've ever driven past on the motorway, you might have seen this place in the distance. It's not the easiest place to des describe. It is a scrapyard, but for some people, it's a paradise, certainly for people who like to collect military artefacts. Now, I'm here with Roger, who works here, and Marsh, who's a bit of a military expert. Marsh, could you tell me what type of submarine that is, please? Right, it's an Oberon class British diesel submarine from the 1960s. Two of them there, very, very good vehicles for sneaky work in shallow seas. So this is a baby. This hasn't had much longevity then, if it's being scrapped now. It could have well been kept in service, uh, perhaps in the pay of a foreign government, but they're obviously breaking it up for scrap and spare parts. Roger, how long will it take you to, to break this down? Uh, about a year. That's an incredible amount of time. Yeah, and it's time consuming as well. It can't be terribly cost effective. Uh, yes, yes, there's a good profit in it, actually. Oh, there is. Can yeah. someone buy that submarine? Uh, no, they're usually bought on a tender basis. Right, OK. Now, over here, we've got these beautiful light ships. Where did they originate from? They came from Trinity House. They were anchored out to warn shipping of rocks and whatever, but they've been overtaken by solar power. Are you going to be breaking these down? Uh, I doubt it. They usually sell us floating restaurants. Oh, that sounds nice. Now, these we see virtually, don't we, all the time on the news? Aren't they from Northern Ireland? Yes, uh, they're used in Northern Ireland, at least they used to be used by the army. They're called Humber Pigs. Uh, they've got the name from this horrible snout at the front. They, they weren't the most effective of vehicles, apart from, apart from being very ugly, because the IRA were able to fire high-velocity rifle rounds through the protective shell and kill some of the uh, soldiers inside. They certainly look frightening. Can we go and look at some of the other stuff, Roger? I can't get over this scale. Roger, these are historical artefacts. You can't be scrapping them. No, we won't scrap these. They'll be kept in store until they're sold. How much would one of these go for? Probably thousands. Gosh, I would have thought it'd be more than that. What do you know about this one, then, Marsh? It's a T-34, a Russian-built tank, late Second World War vintage. And what about these? They're extra fuel cells to give the tank that little bit more uh, range. Now, even I know that's dangerous. They must have been the first thing to blow up. That's right. It was a design fault with the tank, but I believe the crew could ditch them from the in inside if they did catch fire. Roger, do you have any aeroplanes here? Yeah, there is some in the other shed, yes. Can we go and have a look? Yeah. This is a familiar sight. Even I know what this is. Yes, it's a foreign gnat. An advanced trainer used by the RAF in the 60s through to the 70s. A really elegant, agile little plane uh, is used by the Red Arrows. And I believe your brother. Yes, flew my them. brother used to fly with them. Well, I can't believe. Come and have a look at this. If you can get under here. I can't believe that this would land on a wheel like that and people would survive. It's quite incredible. Roger, would someone, would a member of the public be able to buy this? Yes, yes, I'd be able to buy it, yeah. But what Probably do you... wouldn't be able to fly it, but... <laughs> I mean, what, what are the specifications that you have to follow to stop kind of terrorists coming in here? Uh, we do have scrapping claws on things, but not something like this, because it's not actually military. What I love about this warehouse, it's like something out of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You've got everything piled up incredibly high, and it all has value. Yes, oh yes. I mean, this engine, to me, looks spanking new. Yeah, it's an aeroplane engine. And uh, what's that red stuff? It's probably just fluid from the pipes. I'll believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get anything as grand as a Rolls-Royce engine in here? Oh, yes, we've had quite a few Rolls-Royce engines, yeah. Now, uh, on average, um, what is something worth? Uh, say that aeroplane, what would it be worth if someone was to come in here and buy it tomorrow? Uh, it would probably run into thousands of pounds. Hundreds of thousands or just no, thousands? No, not hundreds of thousands, just thousands. Yes. I just can't get over the amount of it all. I mean, this must be hell if you've got to get to the back. Now, I know through here there's something that I really am interested in. Look at this. I mean, the history, you can just feel the history in this. Marsh, are you a pacifist or are you a warmonger if you're so heavily into all military uh, objects? A pacifist, really. I'm but how come? Well, I'm fascinated by the ingenuity of the technology that people have built to kill other people. But as far as war goes, it's a filthy, brutish business, and that doesn't interest me. I mean, this is really mean. Come round here. 
because you've got... I mean, loaded on here is there's a gun shaft, which is probably off a ship. But it's yeah. just such a rusting brute. Yeah, it's a Bofors gun. Dates, uh, that's probably from the 50s or 60s. But they were built before the Second World War by the Swiss, who made a fortune by selling that, uh, the design for that thing to both the Germans and the Allies. Well, Marsh and Roger, thank you. And I, I think it's about time we go to Adrian, who's trying to find his sea legs with the MOD police. Ooh. Now, you know I said to you earlier on, you'd be coming back to us if anything turned up. Happy families. Then join Carol Smiley for the midweek National Lottery draw with music from Matthew Marsden. At 8.30, the ward doors are open in Children's Hospital. Hello. After the news... No ice flowers. The team are on red alert. Dr Paul Featherstone is missing. And the fascinating world of the 